In this tutorial, we will be learning about extraneous roots. When you solve an equation, you get a solution or solutions. In the process, though, of getting your solution or solutions, you need to check to make sure they are valid and not extraneous roots. Remember that a solution to an equation represents an intersection. First, if a function is equal to zero, then the solutions are where the function intersects the x-axis. Second, if the function is equal to another function, which is not zero, then the solutions represent where the two functions intersect. The following equation has two solutions, x equals negative 3 and x equals 2. We can see by this graph that the function intersects the x-axis at x equals negative 3 and x equals 2. Now consider x squared equals 3. This has two solutions the square root of 3 and the negative square root of 3. We have two functions, x squared and y equals 3. The solutions to this equation are where these two functions intersect. When looking at a graph, we see that they intersect at x equals the negative square root of 3 and at x equals the square root of 3. Hopefully, being able to visualize what the solutions to equations represent will help with the understanding of extraneous roots. Consider the following equations, square root of 3x minus 6 equals 0, and the square root of 3x plus 6 equals 0. Now solve each for x. Starting with the first equation, we add 6 to both sides. Then square both sides to remove the square root. Finally, divide by 3 for a possible solution of x equals 12. Now to check to see if this is an extraneous root, we replace it back into the original equation and check it. 3 times 12 equals 36. The square root of 36 is 6. 6 minus 6 equals 0. This is true, so x equals 12 is a solution. Now for the other equation. We subtract 6 from both sides. Square both sides. Divide both sides by 3 to get x equals 12 as a possible solution. Now check to see if it is an extraneous root by replacing x equals 12 back into the original equation. 3 times 12 equals 36. The square root of 36 is 6. 6 plus 6 equals 12. 12 equals 0 is not true. Therefore, this is an extraneous root and this equation has no solution. Now consider the graphs of these two functions. Because both equations are equal to zero on one side, the solutions will be where the function on the left intersects the x-axis. With the first equation, we see there is a solution or root at x equals 12, where the function intersects the x-axis. With the second equation, the function does not intersect the x-axis and therefore has no solution. This lines up with our algebraic work which showed no solution. Take a look at the following equation. First, solve to determine the possible solutions. Subtract 3 from both sides. Square both sides. Now add 1 and subtract 5x from both sides. Now that we have a function equal to 0, we can solve for x. Factor, and we get x equals 1 and x equals 10 as possible solutions. Now we're going to check both. Replace x equals 1 back into the original equation. 5 multiplied by 1 equals 5. Subtract 1 to get 4. The square root of 4 is 2. 2 plus 3 equals 5. 5 does not equal 1. Therefore, x equals 1 is an extraneous root. Now check x equals 10. Replace x equals 10 back into the original equation. 5 multiplied by 10 equals 50. Subtract 1 to get 49. The square root of 49 is 7. 7 plus 3 equals 10. 10 equals 10 is a true statement. Therefore, x equals 10 is a solution. We determined that x equals 10 is a solution to the equation and x equals 1 is an extraneous root. When we look at the graph of the functions x and the square root of 5x minus 1 plus 3, we see that there is a solution at x equals 10, but not at x equals 1, which matches our algebraic work. 
In this lesson, you learned about extraneous roots, that as part of the process of solving equations, you need to check your possible solutions for extraneous roots. Extraneous roots are not a solution to the equation. 